my life be a light. And sing along with us. Let me live, said the Lord, in the light of the word. Let my life be a light on a hill. Leading souls down straight to the straight narrow way. Help me do some good deed while I live. Let my life be a light shining out through the night. May I help struggling walk to the floor. Cheer everywhere to the stand alone. Let my life be a light to some soul. Give me wisdom and power every day, every hour. Let me drink from the fountain above. Guide my footsteps to ride through the dark, stormy night. Give me peace, give me joy, give me love. Let my life be a light shining out through the night. May I help struggling ones to the soul. Spreading cheer everywhere to the sand alone. Let my life be a light to some soul. Give me souls for my heart. Let my life be on fire. Shining out to the world as a sky. Help me rescue someone, thinking now is no hope, that in heaven we shall ever abide. Let my life be a light, shining out through the night. May I help struggling ones to the fold. Spreading cheer everywhere, to the sad and the low. Let my life be a light to some soul. Yeah. 
started in this church, and wherever I've gone, Sister Mary's always been there. I, I heard, I walked into the Salvation Army one time to have a women's meeting, and I heard someone giggling, and I, giggling and I thought, that sounds just like Sister Mary. And she met me there. And she stood there, I was the only singer in that, and Sister Mary stood there and sang with me through the whole service. It was awesome. <laughs> Some of us have walked the other way and said, where are you, God? Where are you? Well, the song I'm going to sing is, It's Me, O oh Lord, Standing in the Need of Prayer. Because you see, God just doesn't want to hear everybody's voice praying for you. 
but he wants to hear your voice. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. But he wants to hear your voice. The word of God says, you, my spirit will bear witness who is of me and who's not of me. God knows who his children is this Hallelujah. God knows your voice. If you are a child of God, you know God's voice. But God wants to hear your voice this evening. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. You know, when we can praise him, when we can stand up, when we can call out the name of Jesus Christ this evening, when we get to the place that we want to praise him and want to worship him, when we get to the place to exalt him and lift him up, he will do miracles for you. All you got to do is ask to see me. That's it. So as I get ready to sing this song, you know it. It's me, oh Lord. <laughs> It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Not my father, not my mother, but it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Say with me. Not my father, not my mother, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my pastor, not my teacher, but it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Not my pastor, not my teacher, but it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. You know, God wants us to just call upon his name. He wants to hear our voices this evening. It's great to have somebody pray with you and stand in agreement. But let me tell you something. When you start praying right, and you sir. hit that That's altar, right. you may be in the flesh when That's you right. get down there. But I tell you what, you stay down there long enough, the presence of God and the Holy Ghost will take over. And your prayer will amen, continue. Amen. And the angels will rejoice this evening. Whatever you're going through, God has your back this evening. Just don't give up your faith. Amen. Don't let the Amen. enemy take. Because the word of God says we're the head. We're not the tail. Amen. We got to stand strong. We got to stand together. We got to pray together. But more than anything, this evening, the word of God that he gave me, he wants to hear your voices. God bless you.
Good side over here. <laughs> Praise God. And look where we are. You're the only one over there. So somebody has to stand out sometimes, right? Thank you, sweet Jesus. I love that song that you sang. It stands me. You know what, uh, Brother Gary, he, when he quotes a Bible verse, he puts himself in there personally. He says, God so loved Gary that he gave his only begotten son. God so loved Ray that he gave his only begotten son. It's me, Lord. So many times I have friends of mine. I was just mentioning a friend today that he says, every time we call you in your church, you raise the dead. Ten out of ten. He says, you're back a thousand. I said, give all glory to God. It's not us. Amen. Because we know sometimes God will take those people home, too. Yes. And I'm trying to talk to him about coming to church one day. He lives in Cleveland. Maybe we can get him to go to the Cleveland church. Uh, the car, I'm with Royalton. It's a farmer boy. <coughs> but I'm trying to tell people, and I've been telling them for years, you know, we have to make it personal. We have to go to God. He does not have any grandchildren. <laughs> he has children. And we need to be the ones crying out to him. We can pray for our children. But it's up to them to make that choice one day to receive him as Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you, sweet Jesus. I appreciate Charlie sharing his praise report. Amen. It's great. It's great when somebody yes. has a, a, a message or a thought or something good that has happened and they're giving God credit for it that's in their life. We need to do that more and more and more. That lifts us up because if... if if God will do it for Charlie, he'll do it for me, and he'll do it for Linda, and he'll do it for you, and he'll do it for anyone, praise God. He's not a respecter of persons. So that's why we do a lot of praise reports here. Some people say it's a testimony. I said, well, a testimony, yes it is, but be careful with your testimony. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. So when we testify, make it a good report. A good report to give God glory. So we can say, Daddy, Father, Abba, Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do. We thank you, Lord, for what you've already done. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Normally I say if this is your first time here, you're only a stranger until you walk through those doors. And you're no longer a stranger. You two are part of our circle here. Praise God. And we're all brothers and sisters in Christ, are we not? Praise God. And Word of Life Church is all churches. It's a church of love. It's a refuge. It's an emergency room. It's a hospital. It's a filling station. I pray that you come to be filled tonight. I pray that you came with an attitude of expectation to receive Amen. from God. I've already received tonight. Those songs, Sister Kim and Sister Heather, where is she? She moved on me over there. Uh, they were fantastic. And yeah, what you sang, Sister, just, just touched me. It truly, truly did. You'll find out I give a lot of compliments, but I don't give them unless I need them, praise God. So that truly, truly has blessed me. Sometimes a song can get a person saved. Sometimes a song can get a person to have the right attitude to receive the word of God. There was an old story many years ago, and it's based on a true story. And this preacher was one of these preachers. He had one of these little organs in the back of the station wagon when they used to have station wagons back in the 60s and he's driving through West Virginia and up and down the mountains and God spoke to him and said stop and sing me a song he stopped and got the organ out and it was one of those crank up ones and you kind of pushed on it and it's playing and he's playing Jesus it's calling Jesus calling Jesus is calling that was the song and he said, as he's playing this song, about a minute, this man comes out with a rifle out of the woods with his 13-year-old son. And the man is starting to cry. And he goes, you know what? I, this is way back in the Korean War time when he was in the Korean War. He said, I was in the Korean War. And I told God if I got out of that war safely, I was going to serve him. And I got out, and you know what I did? I never served him a moment. I lived like the devil, for the devil, for many, many years. 
He said, I've been going through a lot of things in my life, thinking about God and that promise that I did not hold up in my end. And I heard that song playing through the trees and through the woods. And he said, I need to give my heart to Jesus Christ. And with that old country preacher, he did that right then and there. The power of a song, the power of a word, the power of a hug, Brother Gary, the power of a handshake, the power of a gesture, just saying, you're my brother. You're my sister. Amen. I love you. God loves you. We love you. Right. People need to hear that praise God. And I thank God the churches today, we always talk about what they lack. Churches are like that, are like these. You know what? There's still churches that are like that. There's still churches that are Holy Ghost filled. There's still churches that preach the Word of God. Amen. There's still churches that preach Jesus Christ and Him crucified. There's still churches that preach about sin and repentance. There's still churches that preach the truth of God. Yes. And there's still churches that show love and forgiveness. And there's still churches that embrace God and embrace the light of Jesus to show the world. Thank God for those churches. Amen. I don't like it when someone says God doesn't perform miracles anymore. He does. Each and every one of us that's a born-again Christian is a walking miracle because you have been changed into a new creation. Right. You once were something Amen. that was despicable, an enemy to God, but now you are a child of the living God. Right. You're brand new. Amen. That wasn't my message, but we'll take it tonight, praise God. Amen. God is still healing bodies. Still healing relationships, still healing churches and ministries, still healing homes, still healing incomes. When it looks like there's nothing no more there, guess what? God doesn't just paint a picture. He creates a brand new reality to say, this is it. You have a home. You have a place. You have a job. You have an income. You, you, have, you have a church. You have a ministry. So when you don't think you have something anymore, you still have something. You have God. I feel like preaching on Acts tonight, but I'm not going to. When, when Paul's ship was torn to pieces, they all came to shore. Not one soul was lost, but they all came on boards of the ship. The ship changed into boards, pieces of broken wood. But you know what God is saying? <laughs> those broken pieces of wood, those broken dreams, those broken ambitions, those broken things in your life will still get you where you want to go. Do it for the glory of me. Do it for the glory of me, praise God. If you will tonight, let's lift up our Bibles. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 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 Shake them around, and as I say, there's no dust in these Bibles. Praise God. And all of you on this side, and all one of you on this side, <laughs> repeat after me. This this is my Bible. This is the truth. The whole truth. Nothing but the truth. This is the God the Word of God. Jesus is the Word. This is the good news. The good report. The one sound doctrine. This is what we believe in. Stand on. Live by and trust in. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Word. Amen. God is so good. I pray earnestly that today. You spent time with Jesus. I want to share something that I found out in my own personal walk with God. Doing God's work doesn't mean we're spending time with Jesus. Listen to what I'm saying. Coming to church as we should. And if you know anything about me, I'm a firm believer. Hit every service you can in town. Do not forsake assuming yourselves as many have. But just going to church doesn't mean that you spend time with Jesus. Reading the Word of God. And I believe in spending the Bible and reading the Word of God. Doesn't mean that you spent time with Jesus. So, Pastor, what, what, what were you saying? No, do that. Pray. Read the Bible. Come to church. Do God's work. But sometimes we need to get some intimate time with God. Amen. We need to get some intimate time to, to talk to Him, to cry out to Him, right. to say, it's me, Lord. Right. 
It's not the pastor. It's not the other sisters. It's not the other brothers. It's, not the other, it's just me. Amen. Amen. And God knows your heart is being honest. And Lord, I, I don't know if I can do this or I doubt this or I know I can't. Regardless of the side that you're saying, God knows your weaknesses. He knows your good points, and your qualities, and your faults. Spend time with God. My daughter Danielle called me the other night and, well, I take that back. I called her about four times. I knew in my heart she was having some issues at home and, and I don't, I'm not bringing her private life into this, but she was having some marital issues going on. And some things were happening the last two weeks that I just knew in my spirit something wasn't right, was wrong, but I didn't know exactly why. She shared those with me. I said, baby girl, why didn't you share that with me earlier? She goes, Dad, you would have said, no, you just wait it out. Give it to the Lord and pray. I said, I would have said that. Sometimes I do say that. Sometimes I say pray. But knowing the situation, I know how to pray then. And maybe we can pray together about this particular thing, but I'm not going to tell you just to go off and pray. I'm not going to tell you just to hang out when, when there's things that's happening that should not be happening in, in the family and in the life. So I said, you don't know me. And she goes, well, that's what I thought. We need to intimately know our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to spend time with him that we know. We know his voice. If we can't recognize his voice, someone hit next to that earlier, if we can't recognize his voice, my sheep know my voice. That's right. That's what Jesus said. My sheep know my voice. If we can't recognize his voice through all the chaos and all the other voices that are coming into our heads, that voice should penetrate. But we know that's the voice I need to listen to. That doesn't mean we're lost. It means we have to get a reconnection. It doesn't mean we're not saved, but we have to get a reconnection and say, I need to get a little bit more intimate with my Lord. Well, doesn't reading the Bible do that? Yes, if you have the right mindset. Amen. When I open up the Word of God, and I'm just telling you what I do. You may, you may do something else, and that's all right. But when I open up the Word of God, I say, Lord, take this Word and, and let it go into me, Lord, as if it's food. For my body, let it be nourishment for my spirit and my soul. Let me receive something from you that what I receive will change me from the inside out. That's amazing how everything else said it fits right now. To help change me, not to change Brother Gary, not to change Brother Don, but to change me, this old boy. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. I love y'all, but I gotta get mine. To spend time with God. Saying, open up this passage. Open up this word. I, sometimes I sit down to read a chapter and I can't read a chapter. I won't get past a verse. I might be on that verse for an hour or so. Just getting it digested in my spirit. I prayed tonight before the service because I was busy coming back from the hospital. And I did one of these half-hearted prayers. You know, all you know, what I, all you ministers and every Christian knows it. Lord, help me tonight say the right things that you want me to say, Lord, in Jesus' name. And I had to stop. I had to stop and backtrack and say, Lord, forgive me. Amen. Gracious and mighty Heavenly Father. And it's not the words and the adjectives and the adverbs. It's getting a mindset of reverence, a mindset of giving him reverence, Amen. a mindset of, of giving him glory, a mindset of giving him praise of who he is and what he's all about and what he's done for us. Not just using words. Because as I'm saying that, these words haunted me. They've been haunting me for the last three weeks. And you heard me quote them the last three weeks. These people, they, they praise me. They honor me with their, their lips, their mouth, but their heart is far from it. God doesn't want your praises out of your mouth unless your heart is with it. Amen. We can all say hallelujah. We can all say hey, hosanna. We can all say glory be to God. But is it something that we say in church? Do we say an amen when the preacher says something that sounds good? Do we, do we say an amen or praise God when someone's singing and we get a little excited? Or we say amen, so be it, God. 
The word that was just read, so be it unto you, Lord. So be it unto us, Lord God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, praise Him. So is it heartfelt? Have you ever seen one of these? Come and shake my hand, God. You ever see one of these handshakes? Good to see you, brother. You have one of these fish handshakes? <laughs> There's not even. Yeah, you know, when I shake, I want to shake a hand. Then I want to, I want to, I want to hug, man. I want to hug. I didn't get one. There's a reason for that, brother. <laughs> <laughs> the intensity behind what we do is—is is it just for show? Or do you really love your brother and sister in Christ? I saw the ladies and then their guests come in tonight from Trinity Temple. And my heart made a oh, big man. They're here. This is great. I really enjoyed the fact that you guys were here. I was happy. We had a little joke in the church, Sister Kim. We, one time I played a joke on her. We were having some type of music thing or, or, or thing going on. And I told about four or five people. I said, when Sister Kim walks in the door, now run up to her and says, we were waiting for you to get here. Now that you're here, now we can begin the service. We can't start without you. So we talked about that tonight before you guys came in. Now we joked about that, so that wasn't a sincere thing. That was a little bit of a funny. And God laughs with us itself. But I'm glad that every one of you are here tonight. Brother Gary, I'm glad that you're here. And I will hug you and shake your hand again before the night's out. Let me tell you something. When you spend time with Jesus, great and mighty things start to happen. I, you know, people say, well, that's spending time with Jesus. No. I'm going to share a story about Brother Edgar Day. He's passed on to be with the Lord. That's Brother Alex's dad, Sister Jackie's husband. Most people knew Brother Day. I remember going to Praise and Worship Church, and I'd pull in, and Sister Day would be in with her chair, and Brother Alex would be in his chair and I go, what, where's, where's Brother Day? Oh, he's out in the car. They wouldn't say why, but I went out to the car to see if he's getting something out of the car, see if he needed help. He's in the back seat of his car. And his hand's going out and he's crying out to God. He's praising God and he's giving God glory and he's praying for the service that's about to begin. He wasn't the pastor, but he was a minister. He, wasn't, he not, wasn't a singer, wasn't a musician, but he was part of that church, he's part of the body of Christ, but he was praying for the service, not just once, Sister Kim, but many, many times in his car. And when he would come into service, he was getting older and he had trouble standing, and they had a door with a doorknob, and he would stand up and hold that doorknob to help brace him up so he could pray. I'm going to talk about knowing God. Becoming intimate with God. When you spend time with God, intimately great and mighty, powerful things will happen in your life. Amen. Right. We all have the anointing of God upon us. We all have His glory already here. We already, for us that know Him, are saved. But when you know Him intimately, there's something that takes place on the inside. The Spirit of God that can be released itself and manifested. Where others can see that light and see His glory coming through you. Someone says, she really has the anointing tonight. It was already there. He really has the anointing. It was already there. But when we're in tune with God intimately and really spend time with Him, I'm not talking just time to kill time, time with Him to get to know Him more. Great and powerful things happen. Every service, Brother Monday would have Brother Day open up the service with prayer. I wish we could go back into time a few years and you hear this man pray. Because the first time I was in a Pentecostal church was this converted garage. And guess who prayed at that service? And it was a different church. Brother Day. He scared me to death. I've never heard a man pray like this. When he started out, he would go, Lord Jesus! And he'd wake the whole place up. And he was loud. He was loud. I remember he prayed and said, man, I got the wrong seat. I should have sat in the back of the church. But it's ironic that as 
I progressed in my walk with God and ended up at Praise and Worship Church, guess where I sat? Right in the row behind him. And the reason why the pastor always asked him to pray, he was prayed up. He had spent time with the Lord already that morning at home and also in that car. I'm not saying that you've got to go out to the car and pray. Uh -uh, but you know what? We can get we can be praying at home. I'm not saying just pray. To pray all the time. Someone's used the terminology. Pray without ceasing. Amen. We pray talking to Him all day long. If you're washing dishes, doing your clothes, vacuuming, whatever you're doing, pray to God. Know Him intimately. Get to know Him intimately. I know of God. You know of God, but you know Him intimately. Well, I still don't know what you mean by that, Pastor. For those that are married in here, those that have a spouse that's still with us, you can get to know what your spouse is thinking and what they're going to say before they say it. For those that have pets, my one dog, I, a little angel went home, I know what angel is going to do, good or bad, before she does it sometimes. I know what my grandchildren are going to do Good or bad before they do it sometimes because I know them intimately. Sometimes brothers and sisters in Christ, you too, Sister Linda and Sister Barbara, I know you guys spend a lot of time together. You probably kind of know, you know her little quirks. And she knows your little quirks because she's told me about them. I'm just saying. But, but you know each other's little quirks because you have spent time together. Not just on the telephone. You can... You can get to know people. Not just on Facebook. You can get to know people that way. But to spend time together. To have this togetherness. Intimacy together. Turn tonight to Acts 4, if you will. Acts chapter 4. The book of Acts chapter 4. And I'll kind of set up what's already happened. Jesus has already ascended into heaven. Peter and John are going to the church house. They say temple in the Bible, but it means church. They're going to the church to pray and have service. They went to church back then. And it's amazing if you read the Gospels how many times Jesus went to Church. I always say, if it's good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for me. Here, God in the flesh is going to church. We might as well go to church. And on their way to church, they go by this place called the Gate of Beautiful. Beautiful Gate. And there's a man, doesn't mention his name, he's, he's asking for alms at the gate. Asking for money. This is how he got by. He had been crippled for many years. And he was expecting to get some money from some of the people. And Peter and John start to walk by. And he's asking for alms. Alms. We've seen that in the movies and read in books. But he was about to get something that he wasn't even expecting. Yes. And Peter. Peter said, look at us. Don't look at, look at us. Sometimes we need to do that. That's what God is saying to, to us. Look at me. That's what Jesus is. Don't look at the storm. Don't look at the problems. Don't look what's around you. Look at me. Amen. See, the problem today, Sister, when we look at the problems of this world, and you were talking about tribulation, Sister, Sister Barbara, and, uh, before you sang, and, and we, we let things bother us. The Bible says that the woes of this world and the chasing of riches, making money, Make the word of God to no avail. We know this word is spirit and it's truth Amen. and it's alive. And we can do a lot with this word of God in the name of Jesus Christ. But we let the worries of the world get us so bogged down. We let the troubles get us so bogged down. We're worried about our relatives, our, our in-laws, our outlaws, our no-laws, this person, that person. We're worried about the world, about churches, about ministries, about bills, about food. What are we going to eat? What are we going to do? Are we going to make it on time? Is the car got gas? car got air in the tires? How are we going to do? What are we going to do? Where are we going to live? What are we going to We got all these worries. And we might know the word of God. But the woes of this world, this world make the word of God to no effect, no avail. It means that the word of God becomes useless. Because we've taken our attention 
off of the one that we need to keep our attention on. Amen. Looking into the author and perfecter of our faith, Jesus Christ. So Peter wants this man's attention 100%. Look at us! Look upon me! And I love this next line. Silver and gold I have none, but such as I have. I give unto thee in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. Rise! And Peter went down and the man responded and he got up and leaped. It wasn't Peter doing it. He had something that God gave him. He had an anointing upon his life, upon him and in him. The Bible tells us in 1 John that we already have the anointing of God upon us. If we start to realize what God has already done and start to believe that we already have it, we might feel in our people in mind that we don't deserve it, but God has already given it to us. We can start to activate it and use it in faith and say, you know what, I come in the might and the power of Jesus Christ and I lay hands upon this person that's sick and in the name of Jesus be healed. Amen. That's what Peter did that day with John. So now we're, we're picking up the story in chapter 4. And let's start with 4.8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole. In other words, we're saying, let's, let, let's, let's pay attention and examine why this man that was crippled up, why he's made whole. Be it known unto all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of ye builders which is to become the head of the corner. Praise God of that. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other heaven, no, none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. 13. And now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, now to give you a little back story again, they said, don't talk about this man Jesus anymore. You can talk about God, you can talk, talk about God, but don't talk about Jesus don't talk about Jesus. Well, they didn't listen too much. Listen to this. Now when they saw the boldness, be bold and mighty forces will come to your aid. You know who those forces are? That's God himself, the Holy Ghost, his holy angels. Be bold. And when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, there's a difference between arrogance. There's a difference between rudeness. There's a difference between boldness. A boldness can be showing your faith, showing your belief. Brother Charlie stood up with a boldness tonight that he hasn't been shown in the past that much. And he was excited, and that was a boldness and an excitement coming through. And when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. And they said, and they marvel. These are fishermen. Modern day, so these are construction workers. These guys are probably high school dropouts. These are people that are from the streets. How, how are they talking with this boldness, with this strength? How are they doing that? And listen to this. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Sister Kim, they had been with Jesus. Amen. They had been with Jesus. Well, we know they were with Jesus. Somebody might say they were his posse. They were his disciples. Oh. He knew them intimately. And not only did he only know them intimately, but now at the day of Pentecost, the Spirit of God was upon the entire world for all to receive and all to have that he received him. Listen to what I'm saying tonight. Spending time with Jesus. They have already spent time with him. And because of that, they have this boldness of the Holy Ghost being in them. The Holy Ghost is in you as the believer. The anointing is in you as the believer. 
the same anointing that you have. God has special anointings and special gifts, but we all have an anointing. Sister Linda, you have an anointing. Sister Heather, you have an anointing. Sister Kim, you have an anointing. Brother Don, you have an anointing. Use it. Brother Gary, you have an anointing of God. Turn to Matthew 6.33. Most of us know this verse by heart. 633. <coughs> Spending time with Jesus. Everybody there? Amen. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye what? First the kingdom of God. The Bible tells us that to keep who first in our life? God. So seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. I want you to turn to Romans 3.22 just for a moment real quick. Romans 3.22. Listen to what Romans 3.22 has to say. Even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ upon all and upon all them that believe there is no difference. The righteousness of Christ, what I'm trying to tell you, isn't just something, it's a person. The righteousness of Christ is Christ himself. The righteousness of God is God himself. Seek ye the righteousness of God. Seek ye Jesus, praise God. I have the righteousness of God because of his righteousness, because of what he's done. It's not just an adjective, it's not just an adverb. He is righteousness, just like he's grace and he's forgiveness and he's love, praise God. Turn to Philippians 3, 3, 9, and 10 for a moment. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Listen to this in Philippians chapter 3, verse 9. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death, praise God. The righteousness of God. Thank you, sweet Jesus. In John 6, 63, we don't have to go there. The disciples were around Jesus and a lot of people walked away because of what Jesus was saying. His teaching was very hard, the Bible said, because he was talking about eating this flesh and drinking this blood and and they're probably thinking, does he really want us to eat him? Does he really want us to drink his blood? And, and that teaching was hard. And, and many of them left. And, and he looked at them and he said, are you going to leave me too? And Peter stood up and says, no, no. You are the only one that has the words of life, of eternal life. Where, where are we going to go, Lord? Where are we going to go? And he is the word of life. How many people understand that? He is the word itself, praise God. The word that he speaks right here, he also says his spirit and his life. It is spirit and life, praise God. Thank you, sweet Jesus. So how do we spend time with the Lord, too? I'm going to give you one more verse, and I'm going to give you a few little examples after that, and we'll close out. But let's turn to Philippians chapter 4, if you will, tonight. We spend time with God intensely in prayer. Crying out to him, not to make a show of neighbors or people hearing us cry out, but getting into our prayer closet, wherever that is, and saying, Lord, it's me. It's me again. Lord, I need an uplifting in my life. I need an uplifting in my spirit. Lord, use me mightily, Lord, in your kingdom that's already here on earth. Use me to do your will, not my will. Lord, help me decrease so you can increase, Lord God. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. That's why we sing that as our theme song in every service. Lord, prepare me. He's still preparing me, Sister Anita. Glory. So we spend time in prayer. We spend time seeking His face. We spend time getting into the Word of God and letting it become part of us. The Bible says the Word of God is a lamp unto our paths and, and is a light unto our feet. Praise God. In other words, if you're in the dark, you can't go anywhere unless you've got a light or a flashlight. This is the light that's going to take us in the right direction. But listen to what it says here. Be careful for nothing. In other words, don't fret, don't worry. Don't worry about all your troubles and tribulations. 
But in yes. everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, come with a thankful heart, a heart of gratitude, a heart of thankfulness. Let your request be known unto God. And when you do that, it says, in the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds on Jesus Christ. Amen. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think of these things. The Bible tells us that we spend time with Jesus, our lives change. Peter and John, man, the people knew, man, something's different about these guys. These guys a while back were a bunch of dummies, but now they're coming with this boldness and this knowledge, and they're, 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 they're saying these things. How can they do that? They're unlearned men. And they remember they had been with Jesus, praise God. Amen. Thank you, sweet Jesus. The Bible tells us about the Samaritan woman in the chapter 4 of John. She went to fetch water. A woman that was living with the guy, shacking up with him. She had five ex-husbands. She comes at high noon because she couldn't come in the morning with the other sisters because, well, she was the bad girl of the bunch. So she comes at high noon to get water. Jesus is there. He said, I, I have to be here. I have a need to be here today. So he was there as the disciples went to another town. He knew she was coming. And they start talking about the well. They start talking about Jacob making the well. And they start talking about this living water and that she would never thirst again. And, and she says, give me, Lord, give me, Master, this living water. And then he starts talking about himself. We know that when the Messiah comes, he'll know and do all things. I'm the one that you're waiting for. But when you're talking to, I'm him. That's what he that's what, what he was saying to her. Amen. And she's excited and and he she says, I'm gonna go tell my husband and and he goes, Well, you've had five ex husbands and the man you're living with now is it gives it your husband. And she gets excited and there's a transformation that takes place right then and there. Not months, not days, right then and there. There's a change in her life. She came to know the Lord Jesus Christ as her Savior, as the Messiah, right then and there. Amen. The Bible says she left her bucket. She didn't come to get, she came to get the natural water, but she's leaving with the spiritual water. Amen. She's leaving, with, leaving with, the, with, the, with the living water, praise God. And the Bible says she went to town and told all the men about this one, that he's got to be the Messiah. He knew everything about me. And the Bible said that many of them believed Amen. because of her words. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. So your testimony, I've been changed. When people see a change, you can say, hey, I've been changed. God's changed my life. Well, you know what? If God truly has changed your life, they're going to know there's going to be a difference. You're going to have a new attitude. You're going to have a new walk. You're going to have a new speech. You're going to move different, act different, be different. And people will see that and sense that. Evidently, they knew her from being the hoochie goochie girl to now she's in town talking about this one that's Messiah. Come and see a man that knew everything about me. She spent time with the Lord. Not as much time as, as we might spend, but she spent time enough to change her life change intimately. Her life. Amen. There's a story about a man called Jairus. No, not Jairus, but... Uh, uh, Tax collector. Help me out here. Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a little man of stature, but he had heard about Jesus. He, somebody had spoken about Jesus and the great things of the Lord. I want to see this Jesus. I want to see this Jesus. So he gets there, and there's a crowd of people there. You know, what we would do sometimes, we got to church, and there's no place to park. You know what we do? No place to park. I'm going home. Boy, he, he wasn't going home that day. He said, I'm going to park down the road, and I'll go an extra four or five blocks to see Jesus today. Well, they weren't parking, but he climbed a sycamore tree so he could get above everybody else. And God looked up to him and said, tonight, we're spending time at your house, Zacchaeus. Come on down. So Zacchaeus is home, and he's making bologna sandwiches and macaroni and everything that he's throwing up in his house. And they had a feast, and they ate in his house. 
Now here's what's great. God said, today. See, he got to know the Lord. He spent some time with God today. He said, today salvation has come to this house. Amen. And Zacchaeus says, you know what? If I've ever cheated a man, I'll, I'll give him back four times the amount. Coming to know God. Coming to know what he's done. <coughs> Coming to know the great and magnificent creator of heaven and earth. Coming to know truly who he is. Who is this hope of glory? Who is this hope of glory? Who is this hope of glory? They would say it's God Almighty, and you'd be right. But see, God has a name, and his name is Jesus. Luke 10, 38, and we'll close out with this. There were two women that Jesus dearly loved, and he loved their brother. He loved a man named Lazarus, and he loved his sisters, Mary and Martha. So, all the posse, they're coming over, Jesus' 12 disciples, and they're going to go, and they're going to have dinner over at Mary and Martha and Lazarus' house. Jesus is in the living room sitting down, and everybody's sitting around him. There's not enough chairs there. And here's, here's Martha. She's in the kitchen, dropping the salads and getting all upset, and she burned the potatoes. And she's getting flustered. Have you ever had a day like that? I know sometimes we make meals here at church. Sister Mary, God bless you. She burnt the, she burnt the uh, uh, biscuits yesterday. We had to scrape the top off. Those things happen. You get in a hurry. But her sister, guess what she did? She was spending time with Jesus. Spending time with him at his feet. And Martha comes in with an attitude. Lord! Give my sisters lazy, you know what? I've been here slaving in the kitchen, getting everything ready for all you guys here. You always come unexpected. You always come with a group of them. You're like a box of donuts. You come with 12. And one extra one, you. Baker's does it. Right. Get her up. And Jesus says, you know what? She came for the needful thing. She came for the good things. The Bible said that Mary was at the feet of Jesus. I can see her looking up, listening to every word that he was saying. I can see us sitting there. I can see you sitting there. I can see you sitting there, Brother Don. And I'd be next to you, man, and say, come on, come on, Jesus. Just say something. I'm talking about the kingdom, man. Just say a little bit, a little bit. Just say a little bit more. Peter, shut up for a minute. Let, let me hear the Lord. Come on. Come on. And that's what Mary was doing with Doing the important thing. She was spending time with Jesus. <coughs> and the message tonight is spend time intimately with the Lord. Amen. Not just coming to church, not just singing. Sometimes, and there's nothing wrong in preaching off of scripts and stuff. We have people that do that. There's nothing wrong with that. I you know, I'll look at scriptures, but I, I just kind of like to get up there and let the Holy Ghost have his way and do what he's gonna do. Amen. But uh, you know, let, let, let God be part of your life. See, he said, draw near to me and I'll draw, draw near to you. to you. So if you draw near to him, he's going to draw near to us. And, and he's there saying, Lord, I'm drawing near to you. I'm drawing near to you in prayer. I'm drawing near to you in word. I'm drawing you in the intensity of, of knowing you. There's nobody else around. It's just being you, Lord. I'm being as honest as possible. I need you, Lord. You're my Savior. You're my Redeemer. You're my healer. You've already touched me. You've already changed me. But Lord, I have this situation or I have this thing going on my life, but I want to give you praise and glory for everything you've already brought me out of. I'm going to give you praise and glory for what you're about to do right now in my life. If you're going through something, let God know. He knows you're going through it. Be honest. Don't you want your children to know, to, to, to tell you what's going on in their life? That's what I was trying to tell Danielle the other day. Tell me what's going on, baby girl, so I know what to do. Tell me what's going right. on so I know how to pray. Right. Tell me what's going on. Don't let me guess. God already knows our hearts before we even ask of anything. He knows what we need, but he wants us to ask. And the Bible says we have not what we ask not. Be honest with him. That's what he wants. Because when we're really honest with him, who are we being honest with? Ourselves. 
We need to get ourselves honest with ourselves. Sometimes I need to go, Ray, you need to clean up your act a little bit. Ray, you need to do this a little bit more. Ray, you need to do this. You're talking a good talk, but are you... Okay, well, okay. Yes. Amen. Humble ourselves. Humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt us. Lift us up in due time. Thank you, sweet Jesus. So the message tonight is spending time. Quality time. Intimate time. With the Lord.